I'm John Montgomery, Olympic gold medalist, TV personality, and now Canada's Wildhood Ambassador. Get ready, because we're hitting the road in my RV and uncovering some of the best spots in Canada to explore, sip, eat, and play. This is Brew Docking. The Avenue au Québec. With its quaint bakeries, bistros, and cafes, historic Quebec City is a taste of Europe close to home. From the Plains of Abraham to the heritage architecture, it's a reminder of a history and a culture that French Canadians are keen on preserving. We're headed to La Souche, a microbrewery just north of Quebec City, to meet with co-founder Antoine Bernachez to talk about biodiversity over a pint, or two. I really like to start with a foundation. I, I like to understand what it is that I'm getting into, and so I think we'll start with the name. What does La Souche mean? Yeah, uh, La Souche, it means uh, roots, uh, forest, wood, all that you can see around here, I guess. Roots, forest, and wood, those are kind of necessities if you wanted to go RVing, if you want to get out into where I think our country begins, which is at the edge of the city, into the urban environment. And I feel like we are surrounded by it here. Yeah, first of all, people who live here in Stoneham are great adventurers, and we have a lot of cross-country skiers. We have the mountain resort right here, people going to the mountain bike place here at 47. We have rafting, we have lots of things around here. How much of what's out there in the forest actually gets into the beer that people consume here and the food that comes out of the restaurant? In beer, you have a lot of water, so I would say uh, at least 95%, but uh, we have a well, so it's our water from here. And uh, we use a lot of local products from the forest, from the field. We have gatherers that go for us, um, especially at this time of year, it's a lot of work for them. We had a lot of dandelions picked up uh, in the last weeks. We have a very special beer that we made yearly. It's not a big batch, but it's delicious. We call it slightly pisali, so slightly dandelion. Yeah. And it's very good. It's wild. It's in the bottle, and uh, it's perfect for us. Very refreshing. And I was looking at the artwork on the can, and then I began to look at the one adjacent to it, and then the other one. And you get sucked in. It's not yeah. just a name or a brand on a can. This is legitimate art. Yeah. Who's doing these amazing features on your cans for you? It's uh, my friend Felix, Felix Girard. We've been friends for over nine years now, since we opened the brewery in Limoilou. And um, when we opened the brewery here uh, five years later, it was obvious. We didn't really think about it. We just asked him if he wanted to uh, come with us. And I'm pretty sure he made over like 80 drawings for us. I'm curious, uh, when we get back to the, to the local stuff that, that makes this stand out from others, what would happen if you tried to do what you do here elsewhere? Well, this is a bit of all. The, th the thought is the same wherever you go. I could be in the desert and try to be uh, very imaginative. But here we do with what we have, and uh, I think we do it very well. One thing that Quebec is best known for is making world-renowned cheese this side of the Atlantic. I'm headed to Fromagerie de Ile d'Orléans, and they've been making cheese using an ancestral process dating back to the 1600s. Welcome, John. Thank you very much. <laughs> so you are the first cheese dairy on the island. And here we restart the recipe of the first cheese made in North America since 1635. Why is this cheese important to the culture here in Quebec? En fait, il faut dire que c'est pas seulement un simple fromage. Euh, ce fromage, la recette du fromage de l'île d'Orléans remonte euh, à, dans la petite région de Soumaitrain, située entre Dijon et Paris. Et lorsque les colons sont venus s'établir à l'île d'Orléans, ils ont rapporté ce, cette recette et ce savoir-faire euh, à l'île d'Orléans. Et euh, le, le, le fromage de l'île a pris euh, une, une couleur, un caractère particulier dû à l'environnement euh, de l'île d'Orléans. Alors, euh, c'était pour nous important de préserver ce patrimoine vivant de la disparition. How many people make this cheese today? Seulement nous. <rire> What? Seulement nous, oui. Malgré le fait qu'il ne faut pas oublier que c'était un moyen de subsistance sur l'île d'Orléans à l'époque et que toutes les familles le faisaient jusque dans les années 70. 
How much pride do you oui. have in this product? Oh, wow! Uh, énormément. Uh, yeah. Oui, oui. Uh, étant donné que je, je vois tout le travail qu'il y a derrière le produit. Et je pense que c'est ça qui est spécifique aussi euh, à l'île d'Orléans. C'est que quand on, on achète que ce soit le fromage ou d'autres produits euh, au niveau de l'agriculture, euh, on, on, on sent et les, les gens, les, les commerçants nous le font sentir, tout le travail qui est derrière et la, la passion aussi. Next up, Parc National de Jacques Cartier to chat with food columnist Alison Van Rassel about terroir and eating local in Quebec. We'll be cooking old school over an open fire, just the way nature intended. How much are the libations a part of the celebration of food that's in front of us? 100%. That's the center of it all. Mm -hmm. And I think beer is a great example of that, right? Celebrating and choosing to go for a product that's made by local artisans. I think it just makes a product better, right? You're in the wild, you're here, you're in Quebec, you're drinking it. Your memory will fix that in time, right? So much of my memories come flooding back when I experience a taste, a smell, and an experience. And they're mm -hmm. always made sweeter when they're shared. Absolutely, they're better when they're shared. It's funny that you say that, because I'd be really curious to know what people who first made that cheese hundreds and hundreds of years ago would have the opportunity to taste that again today. What would be their reactions? Like, ooh, this tastes like 1600s, because that's pretty much what it is, right? So. Consuming these products is a way of having access to a local terroir, of course, living a very unique experience, but it's also a very um, sustainable way of consuming food, and I think that's what we all need to think about when we're traveling. You said a word that I didn't quite know. Educate me here. Um, terroir? Terroir. Terroir? I like your French. Okay, terroir. <laughs> terroir. Sense of place and time and environment. It's uh, Google Point, <laughs> exactly to where you are in time the environment, the savoir-faire, the way that things are transformed. It's not just a question of earth. What is the importance of cooking local, uh, procuring local, and harvesting ingredients that come from in a, a regionalized area? It's a sense of uh, identity, 100%. It's who we are. It's sustainable way of um, eating, of cooking. Strawberries, for example, we're talking about food, um, liquid cuisine, we're talking about fruit and beer. I mean, this strawberry is a perfect example. It's a, a question of pleasure, right? Yep. Um, if there's one thing that I like to do is always bring pleasure in the food because we need to have fun while we're eating it, right? And sense of place is the ultimate pleasure because it's so close, it hasn't traveled a lot. It's picked when it's ripe at the peak of its color and flavor and, and ripeness. And John, honestly, we can talk about this for hours, but I, I, know we could. I think <laughs> you need to taste in order to understand what I'm talking about. Allison, I thought you were never gonna say that. I thought we would just keep rapping all night long, but let's get to the good stuff. Let's, let's make get. some cheese and strawberries. Let's make some cheese and strawberries. Done deal, I'm in. <laughs> cheese and strawberries from Ile d'Orléans. Great tasting beer from La Souche and great company. Bon appétit en santé. We end our journey with a trip to the majestic Montmorency Falls. A place where you can take on the trails or a leisurely cable car ride to the top. But I decided to go out with a bang as I bid adieu to La Belle Provence. experience that I won't soon forget. The power of the falls, the sound of that rushing water amplifies every visceral experience that you're having while on the zip line. Magnifique.
Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you down the road somewhere.